Um, what do you think about uh, the behavior economics that if you say something and you keep saying that and people believe in that might uh, uh, make an impact, a negative impact on the economy. So for example, now we heard that it was a good thing to buy gold and everybody start buying gold and there will be a price point that it doesn't, doesn't make sense anymore to, to buy gold. And if you look uh, to the economy and we don't put a solution to this, we say that uh, the best thing to do is to don't do anything. There will be a downturn and people will lose their jobs. This might cause a negative effect that will even worse the economy. And maybe if you say there is another chance, there's another way to do it, people will be more optimistic and there will be a, 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 a short end. And on the same way, when, when you see a global economy and with much more uh, difficulties to predict than only for a country or an island, and as we, we talked before about the uh, uh, people buying uh, dollars in US to land in Brazil because have a much higher interest rate, and this doesn't make the same effect as Keynes would predict when he thought about that in 1929. What are those two impacts on, on American economy? Oh, okay, so I, th I think I understood the first question. So you're, are you saying that perhaps some of the reason for the malaise is like a self-fulfilling prophecy that we've got Austrians and other critics saying, oh, this is awful, the end is near, go buy gold and guns and you know, bottled water and uh, Brazilian meat because we're, we're just gonna <laughs> have a collapse. I mean, yeah, that's possible, but I, I think I'm more of a, a fundamental type person that I think the reason the economy is bad is because they had bad policies. Um, I don't think it's, it's just psychology. I mean, that could explain some of it, but, um, but no, I, I think, in the, especially in the longer run, that the economy will improve when they put the right policies in place. And I think one of the huge areas of uncertainty right now is monetary policy. Just the fact that we're having these debates about, you know, is the dollar going to be around in 10 years? I mean, that, if you're a business person in the United States, it's, you know, it's hard for you to, to plan, like, should, should I open a new factory if you're not even sure what the currency is going to be in 10 years? And so I, I think there, it's things like that that a lot of the Keynesians don't understand. So, I mean, you, I guess you could describe that as psychological, that it's, you know, it has to do with expectations. It's not about, you know, the, fit, the tax rates this quarter. But, but again, in terms of making long-term investments, I mean, people are are very, um, things have frozen up and it's, it's sort of paradoxical that in order to try to get people to invest more, you know, they, they stimulate more, they inflate more, but then be, it's that partly what is causing them to be so skittish or just be so reluctant to invest. Um, so I don't, did I answer your question or at least one of them? Yes. The other one, it's about, you know, the, the, uh, carry trade effects that's going on or even the, the capital controls and the other things like the, the governments are doing diverse, diverse things, and that's not contributing to mm. uh, any policy at all. Yeah, so here, I mean, I'm, I like to blame Bernanke for everything. Um, so like if I miss my flight tomorrow, it's gonna be Bernanke's fault. <laughs> but, so I'm a, a bit, uh, I, what, what I don't like, I'm sort of embarrassed when what's happening, and I think, you know, because there's a lot of countries, I think Brazil, they're going to the IMF and saying, can we institute capital controls, because look at, these Americans, they're printing dollars like crazy. That would make our currency appreciate, but that will hurt our exports, and so can we just offset that? So there's, like China, for example, they pegged their currency to the dollar because in the late 90s, you know, there was the Asian contagion, we call it the United States. I don't know if you, what you call it here, you know, Thailand, and they had currency crises. And so China thought they were being responsible, and they linked their currency to the dollar. And if you, you know, if you look at the exchange rate of the Chinese currency versus the U.S. dollar, it's, it's very flat for, for several years there. And so it was like they had a dollar standard instead of a gold standard. And then now the, the U.S. is printing a bunch of money, and so naturally the Chinese currency would tend to appreciate, and they're not letting it. And so the Americans are mad at the Chinese for manipulating their currency. When what we're saying is, hey, we have the God-given right to debase our currency, and you should just accept it, how dare you inflate at the same rate we are. That's not fair, you know, so that, that seems kind of ridiculous to me. So um, 
I don't know if that, that's answering your question, but I definitely think that a lot of what's happening around the world is that the U.S. is inflating and then other central banks are just matching it so that their exports don't get hurt. And then that's, you know, what happens to all the central banks that are inflating in unison and that masks partly what's going on because it looks like, oh, well, our currencies are, aren't changing, so what's the big deal? And, well, no, we're all inflating and it could all blow up in our faces. Bom, vai ser servido agora um café ali no hall. Uh, we're going to serve a uh, coffee break. One last but question, be... please. Last question. No, no, desculpa, agora sorou. Uh, the coffee break, we will be a kind of vegetarian, because, okay. don't worry, okay? E, então, nós convidamos, e daí a gente volta para o último painel com Hans Hermann Hope. Até breve, meia hora.